Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you another really helpful MIDI recording feature called Capture Recording. So what is Capture Recording? Well, if you've ever just been sort of noodling around at your MIDI keyboard or doing some improvisation to come up with song ideas, maybe you're playing around with beats, a bass, a chord progression, or a melody, you might have improv something and thought to yourself, man, I wish I could play that again. I don't really remember what keys I hit, or you might wish you could remember it for later. Well, Capture Recording allows you to recover MIDI input. So this is a really cool tool for recalling recent unrecorded MIDI input. Input, or you can just use it as an alternative workflow to the traditional take folder and comping workflow. So in this video, not only am I going to show you how to use capture recording, I'm also going to show you a MIDI capture recording workflow that allows you to get your MIDI recordings down quickly and easy without having to use take folders or comping. But before I do that, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a beat maker, producer, songwriter, or you're in a band, you've got to check out boombox.io and their incredible new music storage and audio file commenting tools. I use Boombox just about every day for my work. I use it to upload tracks that I've produced or mixed. I invite my clients or co-writers to be collaborators on the project, and they can add timestamped feedback on each track. Then I take this feedback, make revisions, and upload a new version. This helps me streamline my project project management and helps me get the boring parts of my job done quicker and easier. Head over to boombox.io and sign up for a free account today and get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so first let me show you how to show and hide capture recording. Capture recording in Logic 10.7.5 and higher is this little square record button that's just to the right of the free tempo recording button. And if you don't see this here, you can right click or control click up here on the control bar, select customize control bar and display. And at the bottom of the transport options, make sure that capture recording is shown. I'm also going to show free tempo recording just to explain something. If you have Logic 10.7.4 or earlier, the free tempo recording button will not be here, and capture recording will actually be a circular record button. So just be aware of that. If it's 10.7.5 and higher, it's going to look like this. And if it's 10.7.4 and lower, you will not have free tempo record, and capture record is going to look a little bit different. Now, in order to record with Capture Record, you don't even need to click this to start. All you need to do is select a software instrument, arm the track, and then just start playing in anything. You can just improvise until you come up with a cool idea. So let me come up with just a really basic sort of kick and snare beat. Okay, so that's a cool idea. I'm just gonna click the capture record button and you'll see that it recalls all of the MIDI input I just played in. And if I double click on this, you can go through and you can figure out what part of this you actually want to use. You can maybe just grab a little section, maybe sort of piece together different parts of the recording. What I'm gonna do is just jump over to the end here where I had that main beat. So I'm just gonna get rid of all of this. And really what I'm gonna do is just trim this up to this front note here. And then I will just pull this all the way over to bar one. And you, what you can see here is I'm not even at the right tempo. So if I pull in my metronome, you'll see that the tempo of the track, 90 BPM, and what I played in don't even match. So what I'm gonna do is take out that very last note, and I'm gonna trim this up right to the end of that very last note. And check this out. This is a four bar loop, but it's too long for this tempo. So what I'm gonna do is turn on my snap mode. I'm gonna go with bar or beat. I'm gonna set snap regions to absolute value. Then I'm gonna hover my mouse over the right side of this region, hold option. And what I can do is time stretch the length of that MIDI recording. So now what I have is a four bar loop. You know, given all of these notes are not quantized to the grid yet, they're not really in place, but they're sort of roughly in place. And then what I can do is come in here and edit the MIDI data as I need to, quantize the MIDI data. So I'll just quantize that all to a 16th note. Let's see what that sounds like.
Okay, so that very last note there, that was actually a 32nd note, not a 16th note. So I'll just requantize all of this to a 16th note. And then those last two snare hits, I'll quantize those to a 32nd note. And now what I have is a perfect four bar loop that was recorded at a completely different tempo. And I didn't have to play to a click. I didn't have to comp anything. I just took the best take that I was able to capture. Now, if you want to be able to do things this way without playback running, you want to make sure that capture in stop mode is turned on for capture recording. Normally, this is on by default, so it doesn't really matter. But if it's not working in stop mode, just click and hold on the capture recording button and make sure that this option is turned on. Now, another way to do this is to do it during playback, and this will actually keep you in sync with the tempo if you turn on a metronome or play to a, an existing track that's there. So this can be really helpful if you don't want to do the time stretch thing that I just did there. So I'm just going to press play and come up with a hi-hat groove. Okay, so I stop playback, hit capture recording, and it grabs all of that MIDI data that I just played in. It took me a while, and that's the great thing about this. You can just improv until you come up with something that is usable. So I'm just gonna go to the end here, and starting at bar 25, it looks like there's my usable pattern. So I'm just going to cut this here. And then I'm gonna quantize all of this to, I believe a 30 second note. Yeah, I've got some fast notes in here. I'm also a little bit ahead of the grid at some spots here. So I'm just gonna kind of nudge this over without grid snap on. And then I'm going to quantize to a 30 second note. I think I'm gonna cut that there, move that over by two beats. Then I'm just gonna copy and paste the first part over, drag over all of this, hit J to join. And then all I need to do is bring this over to the beat. What I'm gonna do is change the drag mode to overlap, pull this all the way over here so that these two regions overlap, drag over both, hit J, and now I've joined them together. So that's two different ways you can use this, in stop mode or during playback. Let's come up with the bass line next. So I'm gonna go down to my bass synth here. And for this, I, I don't know that I can actually play it up to tempo. So this is another, you know, a great way to use this. I know the bass line I want to play in, but I don't think I can play it up to tempo. So I'm just going to kind of play it more slowly and try to play it as consistent as possible. Okay, so there's the bass line I want. Click Capture Recording, and I'll open this up in Piano Roll. And yeah, there's a part here you can see that I restarted the bass line here. It's an A minor. It goes from A down to F, down to C, and then up to E. So this is all stuff that can be deleted. And then what I'm gonna do is either move all of this over, or I can just trim up the region. Let me go ahead and just select all of this and move it over. So I'll just do something like that. And again, I'm just trying to get it roughly in place. Go to the end of the bass line, and wow, I'm actually pretty on point there. Delete those last two notes so it's a perfect four bar loop. And then I can just trim this up on the back end, hover over it, hold option, drag that out so it fits the four bar loop. Of course, I need to make sure that I have bar snap or beat snap on. There we go. So now we're roughly on the grid, and then I can quantize. I'll go ahead and quantize to a 16th note here. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so I've got my beat, I've got my bass. Let's move on to the chords. Once again with the chords, I'm just gonna play in the chords. I'm not even going to play to a click, so let's see how this goes. Click 
click capture record. And then I just need to go in here and find the good take. It's these last four chords here. So I just need to delete everything that is not those four chords, just like so. And once again, I'll just come in here and I will trim things up on the front and back end. Pull this forward, trim things up a bit on the back end. And then I will go ahead and just time stretch this into place, just like so. Once again, this is not exactly on the grid, but it's close enough, close enough for me to quantize this to an eighth note and put it on the grid. The other thing that's cool about capture recording is it will also record your MIDI CC value. So it's recorded the sustain pedal here. But one thing you just want to double check is you want to make sure if you start shifting notes around, you want to make sure that the CC data isn't in the wrong spot. Because when you shift notes around, this does not necessarily move the CC data. So by quantizing these notes, my sustain pedal might be off. So I may want to come in here and just fine tune the sustain pedal a bit. So now for my last instrument, I'm going to record a melody. And this one I'm going to do in time, just so I don't have to do any editing to it later. And once again, I can just cut this up, move this anywhere I want, and just use the parts of the captured recording that are actually usable. Or if none of the attempts are any good, just stop the playback and start over again. Now, one thing you might think about is why not use this with cycle record so you can just keep looping that same section over and over again until you get something that works and then capture the recording. One thing you want to check if you're going to do that is go up to Logic Pro settings or preferences, go to your recording settings, and then make sure that MIDI cycle on is not set to merge. Set this to create take folder and then loop the sections. I'm just going to, to make this quick, I'm going to loop just these four bars and I'm just going to press play and sort of improvise a bit and then I'll capture record. Okay, stop the playback, hit capture record, and what it does is it actually creates a take folder. And then you can pick the take that you want to use, flatten it, and then edit it and move it around any way you like. The thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use cycle on merge, because what that's going to do is it's just going to merge each of your capture recordings together within that cycle range. So if you're just going on and on and on and on, and you don't want to use take folders, don't use cycle recording and the length of the capture recording will be as long as your improvisation was. But again, that may run longer than the actual musical example, depending on how long it takes you. So capture recording can be a little finicky. It can be a little weird, but I find it an incredibly helpful tool, especially if you like to improvise and come up with ideas and you're not always recording your improvisations. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.